So this is the Asus ROG Flow Z13. I'm saying Z because I'm Canadian, okay? But it's the Z13. And when I saw this announced at CES 2022, I was like, this has to be a gimmick, right? Like i9, 12900H inside of a tablet. Like there's no way this thing is gonna perform well. But now that I have it in the studio and I've been using it, I am absolutely blown away. Gadgets like this, products like this that push the envelope get me truly excited. I'm not saying this is for everybody. This is definitely a niche product, but the fact that Asus could do this is incredible. Now the kicker is that this thing costs $18.99 and that nets you an i9 12900H with an RTX 3050 Ti. There are cheaper models, but when you compare it to the Surface Pro 8, which has a very similar form factor, the high-end Surface Pro 8 for an i7 fully loaded is $2,400. And that doesn't even include a keyboard. This comes standard with a keyboard in the box. Now there are some differences. This is heavier at 2.6 pounds. It's very premium with a metal back. You have a little window that allows you to see the motherboard. It does light up in RGB, which I think is super duper cool. You have a very sturdy hinge that can go 170 degrees. You have ports for your micro SD card slot and the M2, which is a smaller form factor and doesn't run as fast as the more higher end laptops is easily replaced. Now it's not as thin as the Surface Pro 8 and it is a bit bigger as you can see here, but it's still very good, you know, like especially when you compare it to the thickness of a regular laptop, you are saving some real estate. Now one thing that is a drawback of this, and this goes for most tablets, is the port selection. Like you only get a USB-A port and an audio jack on the right hand side, plus you have your volume control and power button. And then on the other side, you have a USB Type-C port. This is Thunderbolt 4. And then you have Asus's proprietary XG Mobile Connect port. Now this is interesting because if you take off the rubber, which I did here, you still have access to a Type-C port, which is fully usable. It's not Thunderbolt 4, it's only USB 3.2, so you can use it as a connection for your display. You can hook up uh, NVMe SSD, whatever you want. It, it's totally usable. You just can't run, let's say, an external GPU off of it. Now, the only thing I don't like is the keyboard. This is very reminiscent of Microsoft's original keyboards from their early days of the Surface Pro line. It's very soft in the middle. So if you're like a hardcore typer slamming on that keyboard, it's gonna feel a bit soft. You do have RGB. It's not per key RGB, but you can change the color of the keyboard, which is kind of nice. The travel distance is really good, 1.7 millimeters, so there is a tactile experience. But the downfall to this style is that you get a really, really small touchpad. It's not the biggest touchpad when you use it. It is accurate, but if I'm using this all day, I would have loved to have something a bit bigger. Now there is a webcam at the top, it's 720p, but it doesn't support Windows Hello and there's no fingerprint scanner to quickly log you in. You do have a beautiful 16 by 10, 13.4 inch display. This is the 1920 by 1200 version, but there is a 4K option that runs at 60 Hertz. Honestly, just by the Full HD Plus version, it looks pixel dense enough, especially on a 13 inch display. I feel like you're paying way too much for the 4K option and it's just not worth the extra bucks. Plus you get the 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is significant better for gaming. Now the i9-12900H is the exact same i9 you'd find in the new Razer Blade 15 or even other Asus products. The big difference though is the amount of power that's being pushed to it. It has to be reduced in order to keep the thermals down. You're going to get the same single core clock speeds as the best and fastest laptops on the market, but the multi-core speed has been reduced in order to keep the thermals in line. Not a big deal considering its size. In fact, the performance on this is quite remarkable, very similar to the 6900HS that you'd find in the G14 or the fastest 11th gen processor from last year. If you're buying this for content creation, it actually performed very well. Remember, this is an RTX 3050 Ti, so it's not the fastest RTX card you can buy, but overall, it does a remarkable job if you're using this for portable work. If you buy Asus's, XG Mobile, this is the RTX 3080, this is a laptop version of it, 150 watts are being produced here, the experience becomes even better. Like production scores just jump up and very comparable to the stuff that you'd see this year, limited by to the amount of RAM that you can put inside of here, but overall, a, a very good jump in performance. The downfall to this though, is that this is a $1,500 add-on. I checked Amazon, I checked Best Buy, I can't find it anywhere. I even checked Asus's website and it's completely out of stock. So the problem is, can you get one of these 
And more importantly, do you want to spend the money on buying something like this? If you're buying this to game, it does a fantastic job. In fact, it's right in line with the RTX 3080 Ti, the 105 watt version of it that you'd find in the Razer Blade 15. So that mobile connect is a really good solution. Now, some of you are probably asking, why not just use your own external GPU? Trust me, I try, and you do get better results than the RTX 3050 Ti, it's just that it's not reliable. Like for one, this won't let you put it into turbo mode at all if you're using a eGPU, not their mobile solution. And number two, it's very, it's very, Glitchy, you know, like eGPUs are never a good thing, right? Like you never get consistent performance. Heat management on this is amazing. Like this thing is always under 80 degrees, no matter how hard I am pushing this thing. It just does a fantastic job. Sure, it has to limit the amount of power going to that CPU, but it's still very respectable. Fan noise is also amazing on this. Under full load, on turbo mode, with things going crazy, the loudest this thing gets is 44 decibels. I will say this though, the fan do kick on a bit sooner than most other laptops just because of the form factor it's a little bit thinner so keep that in mind but it never goes over 44 decibels as for upgrading this there's not much you can do ram is soldered on same with the cpu which by the way is using liquid metal and the only thing that you can truly swap out is the NVMe SSD, which you have access to right on the back. You don't have to open this thing up and start messing with stuff. There's a vapor chamber cooler inside, Wi-Fi 6E, so all the bells and whistles are there. I will say this, the speaker placement is on the bottom sides, so not the most ideal position compared to the Surface Pro 8, which has them directly in front. They're very clear, they're clean and crisp, they just don't get too loud, so you probably wanna use headphones if you are in a loud environment. Battery life is okay on this. I mean, this is an H-series processor, so it's nowhere near as good as the Surface Pro 8. I got about five hours and 21 minutes before needing a charge using PC Mark's modern day office test. Now, some of you might be asking, should you still go for the Surface Pro 8 or should you just buy the Z13 instead? And it really depends on what you're doing, okay? The advantages of the Pro 8 is quieter fans, it's a lighter device, way better battery life, and a better pen to display experience. So if you're sketching and drawing, it's gonna feel better and work better on this than the Flow Z13. However, on paper, this guy is a much better deal and you get everything, performance, portability, you just lose out on, let's say, battery life and maybe slightly louder fans since they have to kick on more often due to the more beefier processor. Personally, I'd rather have this, but if you're just doing general productivity, this might be a better solution for you. Anyways, super impressed. I hope ASUS continues to make crazy cool devices like this in the future because this is the kind of stuff that I get super excited for. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.